Welcome to Coffee with the Mayor. I'm your host, Oldsmar Mayor Eric Seidel, and we are broadcasting live from the top of Tampa Bay in beautiful Oldsmar, Florida, downtown Oldsmar. These segments are featured each Wednesday following an Oldsmar City Council meeting. Uh, it's an update for the community, an abbreviated, uh, abbreviated show of what happened the night before. And before I begin, I want to encourage our view- viewing audience to submit any questions they might have during this segment by commenting on our Facebook live feed. Uh, we'll do our best to get to them and get them answered. And just in case we don't get to you, you can always email me at eseidel at myoldsmar.com. And let me start off by saying aloha to Paul Martin, who already posted on there. He is one of our citizens who are who's stationed over in Hawaii right now, so we miss Paul. Good morning. I guess it's good, super morning over there. Okay. So this morning we're running a little bit different. You know, we normally have Deb Vitrelli uh, in here, and but Deb right now is on her way to the Florida Municipal Communications Association Conference, where she is president-elect. So she'll be coming in. Uh, So I have a a special guest with us today from the Upper Tampa Bay Regional Chamber of Commerce, who serves as Director of Business and Government Affairs, uh, past mayor, uh, Doug Beavis. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. It's beautiful weather outside. Beautiful weather. You know, Chamber of Commerce kind of weather. Chamber of Commerce kind of weather. See what I did there? I see what you did. You slid that right in. The Chamber's got a lot of stuff going on this weekend, and we'll get to that in a minute. But you know what? It's kind of unfair to be in here with him because, you know, he's a a DJ on 99.5 Country. And uh, what's it it called? 99.5 QIK. There you go. So he puts (laughs) it on, and he's an old pro. But uh, uh, so anyhow, our our, our recap is going to be kind of short. Because, in part, we had a short meeting last night. Some say it was the shortest. I'm not sure. I think it was. I've done a records request. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, highlight some of the the, uh, chatter last night. Uh, uh, First, the Citizens Open Forum. We didn't have a whole lot on there. uh, But we did have uh, Dallas, who is a local citizen, who's uh, really been keeping uh, it in the forefront about the issue we're having with uh, flight patterns. Uh, coming in over to uh, Pi, and uh, so we had uh, some comments about that, and of course the city sent a letter uh, over to um, the FAA and the administrator, as well as the airport itself, uh, was stating a bunch of different examples there where that's occurred, and they're, they're supposed to keep it in a certain time zone, and they're flying after 11 o'clock, and it's it's a, it's a real problem, especially he pointed out that um, there's new airlines coming on there, and so it's it's likely to worsen. So we're trying to do what we can there, and it's uh, it's always good when we have somebody come up and comment on that. Uh, the, uh, most of the items on the agenda last night were budget related, a lot of budget items. And and for our citizens who don't know this, the way that typically works is these items that we are voting on individual expenditures and partially the process for procurement and so forth. They've already been voted on. They've been voted on during the budget process, which is a budget hearing process. So that kind of goes very routine. And so that's what we had a lot of last night. Uh, There was one under the city attorney, Resolution 2021-21, adopting language pertaining to the final ballot language for the charter questions on the March 15th, 2022 municipal elections. And so as you might remember, we have a charter review committee that normally meets every five years. As a matter of fact, that's one of the the questions on the ballot, um, uh, that it moved to 10 years. But most of all the items that are on the ballot, all but really, I think, one, are are really housekeeping items. Uh, For example, adding emergency services uh, to the list of municipal functions, uh, changing cable television to charging stations, kind of a modifying, making uh, the document uh, gender neutral, uh, there is one item, and it has to do with uh, revenue bond coverage, and it and it's proposing, which the council supported unanimously, a uh, lowering the allowable coverage uh, from fifty percent to ten percent. And what that means is that, not that I believe it would ever happen, but let's make sure it never does. Uh, that uh, the city right now can issue uh, revenue bonds up to fifty percent of our uh, annual budget. And this reduces that to 10%. So uh, if you haven't done so and you'd like to, I'd encourage you to go online and read this uh, in more detail. And you can find this information 
uh, when you go to look at our meetings and uh, click on the agenda item and you can have it in more detail. And of course, we also approved uh, the tentative agenda, agenda for December 7th. And on that, of course, is the first hearing of ordinances 2021-25, 2021-26 pertaining to the downtown development. And of course, the big issue that you hear everyone talking about is uh, the density issue and should we increase the density? And that's what that public hearing is going to be about. And so I'm not going to try to frame the discussion here. Uh, that's the purpose of the public meeting, right? But the thing that I would say to our public is make sure that the information you're getting is factual. Uh, just so you're getting the correct information, do your research. You know, it, it, I, I've heard some things that uh, the density issue is is uh, suggesting that we allow up to six stories on the site. Just so everyone knows, that's either misinformation or just someone has it incorrect because it's already zoned for six stories, right? So little things like that. Uh, but but absolutely, go do your homework, and you can go to uh, downtownoldsmar.com. And that's the city site, and it has a ton of information on it, all very factual. Uh, the debate, of course, kind of comes around, uh, is this too much for the city, and is the traffic going to be the kind of problem that changes the city, uh, versus you got those who say, well, look, we're putting 25,000 square feet of businesses there. Do we have the people to uh, support it? Uh, and it's, it's a good debate to have, and it's also the cost. Who's going to pay for the infrastructure? And so those are some of the things I expect you'll probably hear at the hearing. So I'll leave it at that because I don't really want to go too far on it. Other key items and actions, just some takeaway and some announcements before we get to our guest. Um, for those of you who are out there, uh, Veterans Day, it was so nice to bring back uh, the Veterans Day event out at the park, Veterans Park. Our Veterans Advisory Board, city staff, and all the volunteers uh, did such an excellent job putting it on. And, of course, our citizens who came out and participated, it was just nice to get everyone together. I know I know you were out there. It was great. It, you know, especially being a weekday and kids in school and things like that, but the tent was packed. It was it was awesome. We're going to need a bigger tent. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to need a bigger tent. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. And, of course, this past weekend we had Drive Electric, Electric Tampa Bay, and uh, it's a partnership with some of the other cities in the area. It, I, we've been hosting it for a while now, and it was a nice turnout. Uh, the weather was good. You had the opportunity to test drive some different electric vehicles and hybrids, and uh, so it was a lot of fun. Didn't I hear the vice mayor went one time and then wound up buying an electric that, car it is as true. a result? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vice Mayor Knapp, uh, he said a while ago, he said, the first one I went to, I, I test drove a Tesla, and now he owns one. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting stuff. All right, uh, just a couple other announcements. One, uh, for those of you who don't know this, there is a really nice art exhibit that's going on at City Hall, and it's going to be there till January 7th, and it's from uh, Tessa, which is a local artist group. And uh, I'd encourage everyone to come out. I was there last night uh, doing a little uh, uh, kickoff for it. Nice crowd, uh, really some impressive art. Do you have any artist skills, Mayor? None at all. <laughs> Stick at all. figures were about the only <laughs> well, thing I could Well, do. you know what I love? Of course, now when we have the art shows, you know, we got the, the codes that you can scan with your phone, and it now tells you about the artist and the art that you're looking at, which is really nice for us novice <laughs> who are like, is that what is watercolor it? <laughs> or oils? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. And, of course, December 1st, 6 p.m. is the annual tree lighting ceremony. So that'll be fun. That's coming up. And then let's see what else we got. Of course, December 3rd, uh, I know we have the mayor's breakfast. I'm going to leave that for you to talk about since the chamber is putting it on. Uh, but we have that evening, the Christmas Wonderland. Wonderland. Winter Wonderland. That's a mouthful. And uh, that's from uh, 6 to 9 at Ariel's Park. Bring the kids out. Well, th there's a rumor Santa might be appearing out there and that it might even snow in Oldsmar. Have you gone down that hill before? I have. <laughs> I, I did, and when I got to the bottom, I fell off my disc and wound up with a wet, we were at wet rear end. Yeah, so. and you know, here's a little a little tip. Yeah. The earlier you go, the softer the fall. <laughs> if, you, if you wait to the end of the night and there's no line, yeah. it's like, it's yeah. a little different. It's a little different. I, and, you know, the kids are going round and round. Right, and, right. 
we're we're like reaching for our walkers. It's not good. So, <laughs> uh, last time I'm just going to comment on is uh, December 11th. You might have seen we just recently announced the Save the Bay program and the mayor's challenge that we have going on uh, with Safety Harbor and Mayor Joe over there and and myself and and really it's an opportunity for us to get involved in doing something about trying to clean up the bay. Uh, I watched his presentation with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program where uh, one of their uh, leaders over there, uh, Ms. Burke, was talking about how old Tampa Bay is the least healthy body of water in, in, in Tampa. And so it's really concerning. And, and so what we're doing is we've gotten together with Watch Tampa Bay, who's a local organization, and we are proposing everyone gets together and we're going to make these uh, vertical oyster gardens that you hang from docks, and what I didn't know at the time is that one healthy oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. That's a lot of water. That's amazing. Isn't it amazing? I had no idea. So you hang the old oysters, and then it encourages new oysters to come and what grow there or whatever they yeah, do? Yeah, it, it becomes like a natural reef. And right. what happens is, so we have local restaurants involved. Uh, Salt Rock is involved, Salt Rock uh, Tavern. Um, we now have uh, Great Catch involved, and I know Beachwood is, I, I believe, getting involved. They just started selling oysters on the half shell. So it's like a community thing. So they save the half shells. We pick them up, and then we put them together, and then volunteers, whether you have a dock or not, come out uh, December 11th at 9 a.m. Uh, we're coming out to the shelter right there by the pier, and we'll string them like popcorn and get instructions on how to go through this process with uh, Tampa Bay Watch. And so think about this. If one, one oyster can do 50 gallons, you start doing the math. If we get these hung, we have over 60 dock owners somewhere around there. Here in Oldsmar alone, you get uh, 1,000 of these oysters. Now you start to do the math. I mean, it, it, it actually makes quite an impact. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and I'm just going to say this to everyone. There's no 100% guarantee uh, we've got to like make sure that it works and it takes and all these things. So it is uh, definitely a great way to get involved. All right. So um, my guest today, he's here to talk about all the amazing things that are going on uh, coming up this weekend. You know, it's like we go from zero to 100, like at the drop of a hat. Yeah, November so, and December are <laughs> packed for us. So how are the second Fridays going? Why don't you start talking about that by a little bit? So we started second Fridays uh, in the summer, and, uh, you know, Safety Harbor does it, Dunedin does it. They're a little bit different. They have a downtown, they have merchants and things like that. Um, we started it on the street, but we've uh, now moved it into the park. We've tweaked it a little bit, and I think um, the one we just had this past Friday was probably the best one, not necessarily from an attendance standpoint, but from the feedback that we got from the vendors because we've kind of manipulated it so that it's on pavement, so it simulates a, a street. Um, the problem with doing it on the street is power. We don't have enough power to provide power to all of our vendors out there. So um, it's kind of a makeshift street. And so it, it was well attended. And the uh, actually the area where the bank used to be back in the day is a big oh, grass wow. field. And uh, the kids were out there playing and rolling around. The music. I saw was, them out there <laughs> throwing stuff around. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It, it was fun. So it, it was good. The vendors were good. So uh, we're excited about that layout moving forward. So well, good. We're all and we're, we were down a little bit on vendors, but that's because we're in the time of year when there are other events going on, and vendors choose to do a three day event, kind of like we have coming right. up this weekend. So I, I heard that from quite a few people that they were like, "Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're waiting." So this weekend, so we can just celebrate Old's March three days. It's, it just makes more sense for us. So that's a great transition. Why don't you share with us a little bit about what's going on this weekend with Celebrate Old's March and the festivities around it? So Celebrate Old's March was originally a city event that was put on, and it was a one-day event. Typically, it was a July 4th weekend. Um, and as you know, and everybody knows, it typically rains July 4th weekend. Also, Safety Harbor does an event the same time. So why compete with that? We moved it to Labor Day. The city moved it to Labor Day. Again, rain. So um, I think the city council and the city decided to turn it over to the chamber. 
Um, we looked at our schedule, of course, November, we have Oktoberfest. Um, I mean, October, we have Oktoberfest um, and second Fridays. And so uh, this coming weekend, the weekend before Thanksgiving, just worked out great. Um, the weather's going to be beautiful. So instead of one day like it was, it's going to be three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, music uh, all three days. Uh, some interesting music, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But uh, uh, a parade Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. We have a lot of entrance in there. Uh, you will be riding in one of the tricked out Jeep. Jeeps. I know there you in, go. in March we do Oldsmar Days with the Oldsmobiles, right. and so we thought we'd do a little something Change different. Change it up a little Change bit. Change it up a little bit. So uh, uh, the council, um, uh, Commissioner Eggers, Commissioner Justice, Senator Hooper will be there. Uh, Congressman Bill Rackus might make it if he can get his flight down here on time, and then uh, we have some floats and some you know groups that are marching and, and things like that, so it should be great. But the music, typically we have we have Stormbringer on Sunday, which is kind of a staple. staple. But uh, Greg Billings retired, um, so he says, right. uh, and did a big show at Ruth Eckerd Hall. Uh, but we have some great groups. One of them is actually a chamber member, Friday Night Shake Society. They play at LBC uh, a lot. And then uh, some friends of mine, Southbound 75, they actually uh, have some stuff going on in Nashville. So they're real well known. And then Jericho, then we have the fireworks at 8 o'clock, which... If you have never seen the Oldsmar fireworks, they are phenomenal. Probably, it's amazing. It's, it, it, I say it's one of the better ones in the Bay Area. Depending on the weather, probably about a 24, 26-minute show, which is phenomenal. I don't know if you remember the one year. It, it, it kind of a funny story. So it's all computerized. Right, right. So the, the, the fireworks started, and they started just gangbusters. And I thought, holy, oh, because normally they start slow, slow, and then they, you know, and I thought, holy cow, what is going on? Turns out they loaded the program backwards, and they did the finale <laughs> first. <laughs> and then it ended It ended like this. Pew, pew. Do you remember the one year where the one, and we, we, we're going to run out of time, but do you remember the one year when the one uh, mortar tipped? Yeah. <laughs> and it shot back out at the crowd? Yeah, yeah, that was a little scary. That was you, a little scary. If you've never gone out there on that pier when they're shooting that stuff off, don't. It is scary. <laughs> don't do oh, it. Oh, my God, because they're right yeah. out there. But but it's a beautiful event. If you haven't been out there for that, bring the kids, bring blankets, sit on the ground. It's my favorite. Free to get in, too. Free yeah. to get in. So Free we'll then. have lots of vendors. This is the great one. Sunday, at two, actually at 1 o'clock, uh, a band called Folk University – and then after that, Code Red, both kind of the same people. Folk University is two people. Code Red is the whole band. But it's actually Pinellas County property appraiser Mike, Mike Twitty. Twitty. Yes. So, so he will He's be talented. A, he is He's a, a talented. and his kid. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. Folk University is him and his son. So um, looking really forward well, to it. Well, good. That. It's going to be a good time. So tell us a little bit. I know we have the mayor's breakfast coming back up. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, we didn't have it last year. We had a couple of an alternate plan. And so it's going to be uh, coming up December 3rd, 7.30 in the morning. Safety Harbor Spa is the host. We ro rotate uh, next year. Hopefully, if Nielsen is back open, Oldsmar will host it at Nielsen. But Safety Harbor is, is hosting it. And the, the best part is the, the money raised from the tickets and a tree auction and uh, with you guys serving coffee goes to benefit the kids of Safety Harbor and Oldsmar. Uh, the Oldsmar money goes to the Rotary Club. Uh, it is paired up with the bikes that a uh, charity that I'm part of, Holiday Sharing Fund. Uh, we buy the bikes and, you know, it makes Christmas special for a lot of kids. So tickets are available at the chamber. Office. And, you know, we almost didn't do it this year because we, we were kind of up in the air with where we were going to be at with COVID. We made the decision to come in and do it. I'm glad that we have. Uh, and, and just for our friends going, I'm, I'm going to set this up a little bit. We have a little competition, <laughs> Mayor Joe and I, about who collects the most tips. So, so bring some cash. So we can beat Safety Harbor again because we did win last time. Right. You know, and I know when you were made, did you? Oh, you didn't win, did you? I'm sorry. I have okay, a bad never, connection. Anyhow. I can't. My but anyhow, listen, it's a great cause. It's a wonderful cause. And uh, really, it makes a difference between some kids having Christmas or not having Christmas. Yeah. So it's uh, really important. So uh, anything else you got? I think no, it's, we're getting there. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This year has just considering 2020 we feel like we blinked and you know i don't even remember and then now 2021 is just crazy gangbusters so crazy, 2022 crazy. i think is going to be i think we'll be a lot closer back to normalcy well i i hope you're right we're headed that way so listen let me check do we have any questions uh for the mayor nothing all right well you know i have to tell you something i want to thank our guest here this morning and uh 
I didn't, I, I didn't get any coffee. You, you don't way. drink coffee. I know that about you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I'm not going to lie, this is Gatorade, but it's almost empty. So it's time for us to go. It's been our 20 minutes, almost on the nose. Hey, Mark, thank you behind the scenes. We have Felicia's behind the scenes helping out over here this morning as well. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit about what's going on and uh, have a wonderful day.